Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr and I wanted to make a video about my favorite relationship type. Which type works the best with an INFJ? Well, actually I didn't want to make this video because, frankly, I tend to really dislike this question because, in general, it tends to distract us from the fact that, yes, everyone does have something worthy of loving. There is something worthy to love in everyone you meet, but I will still address and share that yes there is some there are some instances where some relationships matchups tend to work better for the INFJ and I will try to explain why I have chosen these best fit types for the INFJ and how I tend to describe their dynamics my personal belief is that type is about 50% of the likelihood that the relationship will work and that the rest of the 50% is a question of your personal development, your level of maturity, your age, your in, your how much you love the other person, and how much you're ready to make it work. So here's the 50% that is related to type. Starting with temperament, INFJs are introverted judging types. So which type do you think best fits this introverted judging type dynamic? In my opinion, introversion and judging are a question of your basic comfort zone, who you are when you are at ease, when, where you are at ease, what you take comfort in, what you do to relieve stress and pressure. Now this means that the extroverted and perceiving type is going to add an element of stress and pressure on the INFJ. This is bad, right? Wrong. This stress is usually healthy for anybody who is actively interested in growth and learning opportunities. Generally, if you remain in your comfort zone, you won't grow. So if you're looking for a temperament dynamic that adds to growth, that drives your growth in you, uh, if you're ready to be brave, ready to step out of your comfort zone, ready to expose yourself to a little stress, pick a partner that is an extroverted perceiver because in general this stress, this extra effort is generally worth it. It adds to learning, it adds to you getting new perspectives, new things to process and it helps you get out of blocks. Yes, the introverted judging type is a type that is great at blocking themselves just as explorer type is great at walking in circles. The introverted judging type narrows down and sets forward and focuses and basically remains on their goal. No matter how stupid this goal is, nor no matter how stuck they get, they keep on trying to move forward. The explorer type, they keep on darting around and they keep on taking different corners, but somehow they keep ending up in the same place, not sure why. So these two types can help balance each other in this regard. Now the other types do add a lot of positive things as well. I would say second best if you can't date an explorer type, go with another introverted judging type. Because even in their relation there is a chance that you will find yourself exposed to some extra stress and some challenge. Another INFJ or INTJ type can add an element of challenge into your relationship. Usually leaders tend to compete against each other. If you have opposing goals, or if your goals aren't completely in line, usually they aren't for an introvert. An introvert has their own unique goal separate from everyone else. If it is the case, both will find themselves clashing a little and learning and growing. And the only downside with dating another leader type, another INFJ or INTJ, is learning to compromise. You'll need to make sure that you are letting the other person step forward, that you aren't choking them, that you aren't taking over their space. You need to make sure that both of you are getting forward in life and that you are both sometimes taking the time to help the other person towards their goal. You're not meant to be two lone wolves just doing your own thing. You are in a relationship sometimes required to work together and to help each other. The third other good option is probably the advisor. And the advice from the leader are usually people that are very well able to relieve each other's stress and anxieties. Usually these two tend to meet in times when they are processing emotional issues and uh, traumas in their life. These two types tend to be able to help each other, reflect on and think about issues in life and where they struggle and why they struggled. And so this dynamic is a very soothing, healing dynamic for both parties. Both tend to find each other's 
getting the strength to move on and to start up if they've gotten stuck. So a lot of this issue is of course a question of where are you in life, what do you currently need? If you're locked on finding a certain type, you might be forgetting that you have at this very moment something you need. Every, we all need different things at different times in our lives. So what do you need in this moment? That is the most important question here. Growth, learning, challenge, or somebody that you can heal together with. Another important question, of course, is the question of values. There are NFs, NTs, SFs, and ST types. And these types have different motivations, different interests, and different skill range. In general, I tend to find that it's the best option to go with somebody who has the same interests and the same motivations as you. At least today in the modern century where everything is very interest centric and where everyone is very individualistic. It's good to have somebody in a relation that you can be a good friend to, somebody who can, you can be a partner in crime with, somebody who will be fascinated about the same things you are so that you can both work together towards it. We have this society, this system around us that provides grounding. We have, we have already a lot of influence of grounding, sensing and thinking and different things around us that keep us in check. We, but if times that we don't, if you are a person that is in need of more sensing in your life, more tradition, more stability, if you're a person who has been struggling and is feeling very chaotic and scattered, too idealistic perhaps, there is a good advantage to picking a sensing thinking type. Another sensing thinking type can add that element of grounding. And this is usually the ideal partner if you have recently been through a lot of struggles and if you have been in a very chaotic spot in your life. An INFJ who has been a little out of control, idealistic, someone who has gotten a little burnt may need this sensing thinking type to kind of find some stability to deal with the past. Another positive option is of course the NT, the rational type. And I will say the funny thing about NFs and NTs is that both tend to be so critical of each other and in a positive way usually. NFs and NTs have completely different motivations. Both find interesting what, uh, and fascinating what the other person doesn't. Both have, Actually, let me rephrase that. Both do share a lot of similar interests. Both are intuitive types. Both love intellectual debates and discussions. But the thing is, their values are usually not aligned. Thinkers and feelers tend to have different priority values. They don't have different values, but they prioritize values differently. And that's what makes this relationship quite argumentative. Usually these two tend to argue, wrestle, and try to keep each other in check. The thinker controlling the other person's logic and facts, and the feeler trying to make sure that the thinker has a humane and positive and social outlook. So <laughs> this is very interesting to consider. So with these things out of the way, which type is the best for the INFJ? Well, I would say I would give you five options depending on what you need. If you look for inspiration and challenge that leads to a lot of growth, go with an ENFP. If you need even more challenge and some arguments and a bit of intellectual stimulation, go with an ENTP. If you're interested in somebody that can add grounding, but that can help keep you in check, I would go with an ESTP type. If you're looking for somebody who is like you to learn more about yourself, go with an INFJ. And if you're looking for healing and an opportunity to reflect on your past issues and past issues to move on and to find new understanding of your life, go with an INFP. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this answer. If you did, leave a like or a comment down below and let's keep this discussion rolling because I hope we can get back from the stereotypes and the narrow idea that I can only date this type. Frankly, I think it does more harm than it does good.